Welcome to Infinite Universe with interesting episode. What happens when a country starts thinking that even the most difficult parts of nature can be solved with engineering? This is what's happening in China, where construction projects have amazed the world and left American engineers in complete shock. Mountains that once blocked paths are now crossed by giant bridges. Trains travel so fast across the land that they seem to race airplanes. Rivers have been redirected, deserts are now growing plants, and huge cities are looking small next to China's new generation of massive structures. China is changing the way people think about construction, breaking records, and ignoring old limitations. If you want to know what the future looks like, you only have to look at what China is building right now. If you've ever been frustrated by a late train or annoyed about roads full of potholes, it's hard to imagine the speed and quality of development happening in China. High-speed trains in China have gone from being something out of science fiction to something people use every day. The Fuxing Hao bullet train looks like something from a movie, with its silver body and quiet movement. It doesn't roar, it glides. And it doesn't just carry a few people, it carries thousands of passengers at once, moving them across the country at speeds that many people elsewhere only experience in expensive sports cars. What's most shocking is that this isn't rare in China. It's normal. China has built the largest and fastest high-speed rail network in the world. It stretches over 40,000 kilometers, which is long enough to wrap around the entire planet. You could get on a train in Shanghai with a cup of tea and wake up in Beijing just five hours later, after traveling the same distance as New York to Atlanta. And it's not only the big cities that benefit smaller towns and countryside areas that were once far from anything are now directly connected to the heart of the country's economy. These places are thriving now because they're only a short train ride from business hubs. The most amazing part isn't just how big it is, it's how fast they built it. The first big high-speed rail line only opened in 2008. It connected Beijing to Tianjin. Since then, new train lines have appeared almost like magic. Mountains have been dug through, rivers have been crossed, and crowded cities have been linked together. How did they do it? Well, while other countries often spend years holding meetings, doing studies, and dealing with lawsuits, China has a system that moves very fast. Decisions are made from the top, and then everything moves quickly. Cranes, machines, and thousands of workers get to work almost immediately. Sometimes, they even build whole sections of train tracks in a factory and then bring them to the site to be installed. In some cases, they replace or build a new track in a single night like what happened in downtown Beijing. That job was done overnight and became famous around the world. Some people might say this speed is all about government power, but that's not the full story. The trains themselves are advanced and designed in China. In the beginning, China used help from other countries to start their rail system. But now, trains like the Fuxing Hao are built completely with local technology. These trains are the fastest regular passenger trains in the world and can reach speeds over 400 km per hour. But it's not just about going fast. The ride is comfortable, the stations are clean, tickets can be bought online, and you can even get Wi-Fi while speeding through the middle of nowhere. Business people hold meetings on the train, families plan their travel around train schedules, and students travel home from school using a system that turns long journeys into short rides. How did China do this so fast while other countries are stuck in delays? It's because China didn't just see trains as a way to move people. They saw them as tools to grow the economy. Fast trains mean people can live farther away from work, businesses can reach more places, and new industries can develop in areas that were once hard to reach. Every kilometer of track creates opportunities, and the government was willing to invest huge amounts of money to make it happen. Even during the global pandemic, when much of the world slowed down, China's train projects kept going. Construction adapted, new safety rules were added, and soon the trains were running like nothing had happened. Of course, some people worry about what this all means in the long run. Building so quickly and so much comes with risks. Some are concerned about how to keep all the tracks in good shape over time, how the environment is affected, and how much debt is being built up by local governments trying to keep up. There have been a few serious accidents, and some train lines in very quiet areas don't have enough riders to make a profit. But overall, most of the system works very well and even makes money. People love it, and they continue to use it. 
If you compare this to the United States, the difference is shocking. The first high-speed rail project in California has been going on for years, is way over budget, and still has only a few miles of track completed. So why can't other countries just do the same thing? It's not just about money or politics. China's success comes from a mix of big goals, quick action, and a total focus on finishing the job. Environmental rules and community concerns are dealt with fast. The legal system can move projects forward quickly. China builds everything at home, using its own workers and technology, so they don't have to wait on anyone. Once a project is approved, everyone involved knows they must move fast. In that kind of system, innovation isn't just nice, it's necessary. And now, China's high-speed rail system is getting even bigger. The next step is connecting it to nearby countries in Southeast Asia and Central Asia. These new international lines could change the economies of whole regions. Every time China breaks another record, whether it's the longest line or the most passengers, the distance between China and the rest of the world grows larger. Engineers in places like the US and Europe are amazed, but also a little worried. Can anyone catch up, or will China stay ahead for the rest of the century? Could other countries leap forward and do something similar? Or are the old ways of building infrastructure just too slow to keep up with a country that refuses to wait? And what happens when one country can move its people and goods so efficiently that it changes the balance of power in the world? These are the questions keeping people up at night planners, politicians, and thinkers all over the world. But this isn't the end of the story. Because if high-speed trains weren't impressive enough, China's bridge projects are even more unbelievable. Imagine seeing a deep valley, a wide sea, or a steep mountain gorge and thinking, we'll just put a bridge here. In history, bridges have always shown what people can do when they work together to defeat nature's challenges. But in China, building a bridge is more than just crossing a river or a gap. It's about showing the world that even the impossible can be done. Over the last 20 years, China has become the leader in building some of the world's biggest and most complex bridges. Think about famous bridges like the Golden Gate in San Francisco or the Brooklyn Bridge in New York. Now imagine a country that didn't just build one or two bridges like that, but dozens. China now has eight of the world's ten longest sea bridges. And they didn't do it by copying old designs. They created new ways to build. One famous example is the Hong Kong Zuhai Macau Bridge. This bridge is more than 55 kilometers long and connects three major cities. It's so long that you can't even see the end of it. It's not just a bridge, it's also a tunnel and includes man-made islands. It was built to survive typhoons and last for generations. The tunnel part alone had huge problems to solve. Engineers had to carefully line up 33 huge pieces, each the size of a building, under the sea. The ocean's tides and movements made everything harder. Just a little mistake could ruin the entire section. Some storms delayed work by weeks, and every small shift in the seabed had to be considered. But even with all that, the bridge was completed. And this is just one example. If you travel inland, you'll find even more amazing bridges. Some are suspended high above valleys and rivers. One bridge, the Bipanjing Bridge, is so high that looking down can make your legs shake. It stands over a thousand feet above a deep river valley. Building it meant facing dangerous weather, hard to reach places, and constant risks. Yet, some of these massive bridges were finished in just a few years. That's because of non stop work, constant problem solving, and a clear goal to finish on time. So, how did China get so far ahead in building bridges? Part of it is the country's size but it's also about how decisions are made. In many countries, bridge projects can be delayed for years because of rules, court cases, or money problems. In China, once a project is approved, everything moves quickly. Workers, machines, supplies, and even entire factories are sent to the project site. Local and national governments work together to make sure nothing slows things down. The system puts speed and results first. It works well, but it also comes with debates and concerns. Even with the speed, the technology is top-notch. China has developed ways to rotate large bridge parts into place in just hours. For example, the Pingxiang Bridge in Hebei was turned 90 degrees and attached to the main bridge in less than two hours. In the past, 
That kind of work would take weeks. This isn't just to show off. Doing things faster saves money, keeps traffic flowing, and proves that impossible goals can be achieved. Of course, going this fast has risks. Building so much, so quickly, means engineers have to always check for signs of problems. They look for shifts in the ground, signs of damage, and stress in the materials. To help with this, they use new materials and strong anti-rust technology. It's a non-stop job to keep these giant structures safe and working for years to come. China's infrastructure revolution shows the world what can happen when a country chooses not to accept limits. Fast trains and giant bridges are just part of the picture. The message is clear, nothing is too big, too difficult, or too far away. And while some people worry about the speed, cost, and long-term effects, others see this as a model for the future. Either way, the world is watching. Because what China is doing isn't just about building roads and railways. It's about rewriting the rules of what humans can do when they decide to stop waiting and start building. They leave impressed, sometimes overwhelmed, often questioning how their own nations, mired in bureaucracy, public opposition, and funding shortfalls, can ever catch up. China's strategy is not just about building infrastructure. It's about building a future that is faster, cleaner, and more resilient. While other countries are still drafting plans or debating policies, China is laying cables, pouring concrete, and switching on the grid. The contrast is especially clear when looking at energy storage. While many countries are still relying heavily on traditional grid models, China is pushing hard into next-generation battery systems. Massive lithium-ion storage plants are rising in industrial zones. Researchers are experimenting with solid-state batteries, molten salt storage, and gravity-based systems that store power by lifting and lowering giant weights. These aren't just theoretical concepts, they're prototypes under real-world testing, and many are already being integrated into China's national grid. The logic is clear. Renewable energy sources like solar and wind are only as good as the systems that store and distribute their power. Sunlight is not always available. The wind doesn't always blow. But with advanced storage and distribution, China ensures that the energy harvested today can be used tomorrow rain or shine, day or night. Ultra-high voltage transmission lines span the country, moving power from the sunny deserts of the west to the energy-hungry cities of the east with minimal loss. These lines stretch across thousands of miles, carrying electricity farther and faster than most other countries even attempt. Yet what makes China's approach so different is its coordination. These projects don't exist in isolation. They are part of an interconnected plan, solar, wind, hydro, battery storage, electric transport, and smart grids all working together. The national leadership sets a direction, and provinces, cities, and corporations move in sync to make it happen. It's not just engineering. It's orchestration at a national scale. Take the example of Xiong'an New Area, a city being built from scratch just outside of Beijing. It's a living prototype of China's energy future, underground utility tunnels, fully electric public transport, AI-controlled heating and cooling systems, and infrastructure designed to accommodate future technologies that haven't even been commercialized yet. The goal is not just to reduce emissions, it's to create a new model of urban life. Of course, there are still major questions. How sustainable is this rapid development in the long term? Can the supply of critical materials like lithium, cobalt, and rare earth elements keep up with demand? Will environmental protections hold as pressure builds to build even faster? And what about the people whose lives are disrupted or displaced by such massive changes? These are real concerns, and China is still grappling with them. Still, the scale of ambition remains unmatched. While the West debates carbon taxes and incremental changes, China is rewiring itself for an entirely different energy age. The world watches, some with admiration, others with anxiety. If this gamble pays off, China could emerge not only as the world's factory, but as its energy innovator and climate leader. The implications stretch far beyond engineering. They touch on geopolitics, trade, national security, and global influence. Whoever leads in clean energy will set the rules, command the markets, and shape the planet's future. Right now, China is positioning itself to be that leader.
Its engineers are not just building power plants, they're building leverage. So the question for the rest of the world is no longer just can we do what China is doing, it's can we do it in time? Because climate change will not wait. Droughts, floods, wildfires, rising seas, these are not distant threats, they are already here. And in the face of this urgency, China is not waiting for permission. It is building, testing, adapting, and accelerating. This is not to say that China has all the answers. There are still challenges ahead, technical, environmental, and social. But what's clear is that the age of waiting is over. The era of action has begun. And China, more than any other country, is defining what action on a planetary scale looks like. As the 21st century unfolds, the spotlight will stay on the east. From the deserts of Gansu to the turbines of the Yangtze, from floating solar farms to the orbiting power stations of tomorrow, China is showing the world a version of the future that is bold, complex, and intensely ambitious. Whether others follow, compete, or take a different path entirely remains to be seen. But the message is clear, the race is on, and the track is electric. Thanks for watching. Keep it and stay tuned. Like and subscribe our channel. Have a good day.